Hi, it's Warren Hewitt. Hope you're doing marvellously well. This week we have another video from Carlo Libertini on Melodyne. So frequently what I do in Melodyne is I take a lead vocal and I comp it. Um, I've been for years, I've been comping by hand and then using auto-tune and graphical. And to be honest, personally, I still do a lot of that. I graphically use it and I know it well. However, a lot of my friends and a lot of you out there tell me that Melodyne is becoming super incredible. So because I'm like not the world's greatest Melodyne expert and I want to give you the right information, we got Carlo to do a couple of videos for us. He's already done one, which we'll have a link to here. But of course, this one is about tuning the lead vocal in a more professional manner, at least that's what he's calling it, and also building harmonies off of it. This is something I have done using Melodyne, and in a pop situation, it's pretty awesome. Especially if you've just got a lead vocal and a double, and that's all the choice that you have, and you want to build harmonies, and your singer's left, and you want to match the vocals. I do it quite a lot. It's one of the things in Melodyne that I do and I like to do, and I want to share it with you, but I want to share it with you with somebody who knows it inside and out. So here we have Carlo's video coming up. As ever, please subscribe. Go to producelikeapro.com, sign up for the email list, and of course you get a whole bunch of free stuff, and of course you can try out the 14-day free trial of the Academy. So enough about that. Let's get on and watch Carlo talking about all of the stuff you can do within Melody. Hi everyone, it's Carlo Libertini here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through pro-level vocal editing techniques and creating harmonies to boot. I'll be covering not only corrective editing techniques, but creative ones too. Now, keep in mind that these techniques can vary, sometimes greatly, all dependent on your source audio, as they should. Why? Because pop energy is different than folk music and so on. But one thing remains the same, and that's the fundamentals. Melodyne's editing fundamentals don't change. It's how you use them that do. So let's get busy. What we're looking at here is a real-world working scenario. I often receive my projects as stems, and individual tracks rendered out for either referencing and or editing like this. In this case, I received a stereo music track and one mono vocal track. So to begin, what I'm going to do is insert Melodyne on each one of these tracks. And it's always good practice to put Melodyne as your first insert slot. Why? Because you don't want something like EQ or some kind of compression to maybe kind of trick Melodyne. It doesn't work that way. Melodyne is kind of a purist in a sense where it needs to work with the original source audio to give you exactly what you need to build upon. So let's just plug in Melodyne here. I'll select Melodyne Mono and the plugin will load. Next, I'm going to insert, yes, here on my stereo music track, Melodyne Stereo. Now, another cool thing here with Melodyne 4 is how I'm working with both a stereo track here and a mono track at the same time in the same editing window. Before, we'd have to have separate windows and we couldn't view them together. Now, the reason why I also want to transfer my stereo mix uh, will become apparent in a little while. But what I really want to do is I want to have that included so I can reference my audio against. And I'll do some demonstrations of that. Now, let's select here and here to activate our transfer. And what I'll do is transfer basically from the beginning to, say, the end of the first chorus. And we'll get started from there. I've been hit a couple bullets, pulled the trigger, I'm not a killer, I've been caught by a love sick drive-by, uh, you knock me out and I can barely breathe, hit so hard my heart skips to bleed, all I need. Open my eyes The battle is done And I think that you won Don't open my eyes Take my own hurt And save my life while I can Don't open my eyes Yeah There now, what we're looking at here is the stereo 
two-track mix. The reason why it's viewed this way is because under algorithms, it's identified it as percussive. And that's good because I want to keep it that way. I want to use this as a reference for timing. Here, on the other hand, my lead vocal, if I select focus on it here in the track pane, we'll see that it has been separated out with its Melodyne Magic as individual notes. Again, if you don't know what this is or haven't seen it before, it's relatively simple. Here, for example, this very first passage here in my Pro Tools track is now represented as musical energy here as individual notes. Now, to get started, I kind of certain have a, um, a little checklist I like to go through. And the first one is usually always, did Melodyne accurately identify the key, which it did, C major. And we also want to keep an eye on our time grid spacing. To edit this for some reason, if you wanted to work with timing, of course, here up in the top right, this drop down arrow, we can choose our grid reference spacing. All right? So keep that in mind. Watch as I change it. It'll conform like that. Now, also here, you'll see that we have uh, an orange icon and a gray icon. The gray icon activates the notes for display, but only makes them as referencing information. They're not editable. So if I wanted to edit the vocals, I would keep it here as orange. And if I wanted to reference it against the backing reference track, I can hold con command down and activate the gray icon. And there you'll see both of them at the same time. This is how I like to work now. Let's take a listen to this. Now, playback in Melodyne is important as well. I can double click here in the Melodyne plugin and I'll hear the audio within the plugin. To hear the audio back in Pro Tools, I can just play it back through Pro Tools Transport. And also another thing to keep in mind here is the balance slider. This is also new in Melodyne 4 up here in the top right corner. When I have it all the way to the left, what I'm going to hear is just the notes I have made ready for editing, not the gray notes. As I slide it to the right, then whatever I has have as gray out here for referencing will begin to come in uh, volume wise. And the best way to show that is to demonstrate it. So here I'm gonna start with it all the way in the left. I've been hit first, felt the bullets, pulled the trigger, I'm not a killer. I've been caught by your love sick drive by. Now, the reason why we have that is so you can obviously reference your work against the mix. Why? Because this is audio we're working with. It's an ears first, eyes second operation here. So let me go back to the beginning. I heard a little something. I'm going to balance it a little bit halfway right about here. Let's take a listen to this. I've been hit up. All right. Now let's start editing this. There's no rule to how to get started. It's up to you. And again, every project and music style is different. One thing that I like to point out is that one of my favorite tools here is the amplitude tool. It's also here up in the transport bar of uh, the uh, menu bar from Melodyne. And you can access it by right clicking at any time. Now, what does this do? It allows us to edit the amplitude of anything, one note, a part of a note, or even an entire phrase. Now, why should you care about that? Well, rather than writing automation, for example, we can now control the dynamics of this performance one note at a time. I mean, that's pretty powerful. It's very creative. Now, looking at this performance, I can tell that there are some dynamics here, which is great. The band we're working with, by the way, is Little Empire. And our lead vocalist here is Lily. So I want to thank her for this amazing performance and this file that we're going to be working with today. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Little Empire. So let's get started. You're going to hear that some of these notes are quieter than the others. And we can begin to use amplitude editing to get started. Why? Because sometimes we want to source edit the audio. And what I mean by that is if done correctly, it'll actually sound like it was recorded that way. And then you can use your dynamics and your compressors a little bit more creatively in the mix process. I'll show you what I mean. Here in the very beginning, we kind of have a very quiet passage. I've been hit up. And you can see how these notes here get louder as they should, because that's where the energy starts. But this word hit is a little quiet. I've been hit up. 
Now we could raise the energy of that if we wanted by selecting it. And I brought it up two decibels indicated here in the Melodyne plugin. Take a listen. I've been hit a spell. Now that word has a little bit more energy and just that one word. That's the kind of detail you can get here from Melodyne. And we're going to amplitude edit some more. I'm going to take this uh, section at a time. Here's the, here's the first section of the verse. Now I can see some of these are quieter than others. Amplitude editing again is something that is selective. You don't have to do it, but I'm choosing to demonstrate it here. Okay. Now these phrases can come up. I heard in the mix. I'm going to bring them up about two dBs. Let's take a listen. I've been hit a the bullets. This phrase bullets, I'm going to bring that up. Just about one dB. The word lovesick. Again, only about two dBs. I've been caught by your love sick drive by. Oh, uh, here's a perfect one. At the very end. I love that beautiful, beautiful vibrato. Very musical. Very nice. We could actually, let's take those three notes. Again, I'm rubber banding them. Oh, here's something I should point out too, is note separations. I'm noticing that it's identifying the end of that note here, close to where the vibrato ends. Well, I don't want that. You can click and slide that. And I'm going to tell Melody I know the end of that note here is at second 14. Now I can rubber band these again and watch what happens. I have more, I've preserved more of the detail of the length of that note. Grab my amplitude tool and let's bring that up about three dBs. Take a listen. Beautiful. I love that. I can hear more of that natural, beautiful, perfect vibrato there. Now, note separations are key when you begin editing this, especially with pitch. And the reason why is because Melodyne is a smart program. But keep in mind, Melodyne is designed to work for you, not the other way around. It's how you utilize it that makes a big difference. It's not always going to maybe detect things where you want them. And Melodyne actually has settings for you to customize its detection based on the audio you're working with. And that's probably for another video in the future. But for now, I'll give you another example. Here we have the word. Yeah, there it is. Right after the word hit. The word first. Watch, Melodyne is telling me that it ends there. Well, I know that that word probably ends somewhere about there. Now watch as I move that separator, how the energy was automatically transferred. That's beautiful. Another thing I want to point out here is we've got some sibilance and some breath following this word. The bullets. The word bullets. You can hear the S right there. Now we can scrub in Melodyne's timeline. Watch this. Okay, let me uh, move my slider all the way to the right so we're only hearing the vocal. The bullets. There's the breath. So what we'll do here is take the separator and I'm going to say that breath belongs, yes, to the intro of that verse, that, that word, and we're going to separate there and, and make take the sibilance out and make it completely editable and individual. Why do I want to do that? Because when you're source editing audio with Melodyne like this, you actually have access to what I feel is one of the world's greatest DSers. You're not applying a filter on top of this and sweeping out S's. You're going to pick them out and literally in real time. For example, I can set my loop markers like this. And while the audio is looping, I can massage this into place and stop when I feel it sounds right. Now, I'm probably not going to do this throughout the video too much. Why? Because it may sound a little annoying to you, but you can do it. So let me try it once here. I just felt the bullets pulled the trigger. I just felt the bullets 
pull the trigger. I felt the bullets. Pull. There, I notched it down over four and a half dBs, and I could probably go a little bit more. See how easy that was? And then to deactivate your loop, just double click in that region and it's done. Real time audio editing is where it's at here with Melodyne. I mean, imagine being able to massage and do everything while you're cycling audio in place and never having to worry about crossfading. So we looked at some separating and some amplitude editing. Another thing I wanna show you here is why we transferred the stereo stem here. Well, in the beginning of this song, we have access to moving notes and we can time them to the referenced audio stereo track that we received. For example, in the beginning, this word hit, I really like that. What if the producer wanted it to fall right on the beat one of the, of the song so it had a little bit more impact? Let's take a listen. I'll show you what I mean. I've been hit first, felt. Let me bring in the backing tracks a little bit. Do that again. I've been hit first, felt. Now, how could we do that? Well, I could create a hard separation here. See that? I've literally separated this group of notes from the others and can move them freely. Or, let me undo that. I can select these notes. And because I've got a little bit of time stretch in this one, a little bit of length in this one, I can select my timing tool here. And by holding my Option key on a Mac or Alt on a PC, I can take that note and watch what I'm doing. I'm bringing it right to the beginning. Now I noticed that I did time compress this one. It may not work, but I'm experimenting here. I'm also gonna take the amplitude tool and increase that note just another dB and a half. Let's take a listen. And again, I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. Another thing I wanna point out is that with the amplitude tool notes that I've edited, these lines indicate the grace, the transition between them. If they're too curt, they'll sound very robotic. If you want a little bit of grace, they're also editable. So although Melodyne creates automatic crossfades for you, you can still adjust the transition between the notes personally. All right, let's take a listen to this now. I've been hit, the bullets, the Not as bad as I thought it would be. Let's do that again. I've been hit, but the bullets pulled. Not bad. So now this is an idea of how we're using the reference track as a timing guide for our audio. I've been hit, but the bullets pulled the trigger. I'm not a killer. I've been caught by your love sick drive by. All right, now we haven't even talked about pitch yet. Let's select a note here with my pitch tool. Here we go, I'm gonna select it right here. And let's take this note and look at that. What an amazing singer Lily is. This G note, for example, here we have some information, zero cents, perfectly in tune. Now, because this artist has a lot of, a lot of feeling behind their, their performance, we want to preserve that. That's not something we want to erase. That's, that's her heart singing. So. What I'm going to do here is because she's pretty spot on, I'm going to select this range of vocals that we're working with here initially and grab my pitch macro. Now, if I select snap to C, some of these notes might move. And that's what I want to be wary of. Are they moving where I feel or the artist and the producer feels best represents the song as well? Because just moving everything to tonal center may be moving it in a completely different note location, even though it's still in key. So keep that in mind. So I'll select that. And again, for demonstration purposes, I would be doing this in real time, of course. But here I'm going to show you, so I'm not talking over the audio, moving everything to tonal center. Now, keep in mind, this new macro in Melodyne 4 is dynamic. It's going to only move the most out of tune notes first. You see that? And then it'll tweak the most naturally centered ones soon after. And because her pitch is, her dri uh, pitch drifting is really good, her emotion is good, pitch drifting is the equivalent of staying in your lane while you're driving. Well, it's the same thing with singing. She's not wavering too much, and this may affect some of the emotion. So perhaps I'll tweak it up only maybe about 20%. And to commit your edit, simply hit OK. Now we've done quite a bit on this passage right from the get-go. Let's take a listen. I've been hit, I felt the bullets, pulled the trigger. I'm not a killer, 
I've been caught by your love sick drive by. Nice. It's really shaping up. The song obviously begins to dynamically increase here in the next part of the song here, the pre chorus type area. Let's take a listen to this from here. You knock me out and I can barely breathe. Hit so hard, my heart skips a beat. All I need is a little release. Oh. Again, very dynamic, really cool, really wonderful. Now, some of these notes, yes, dynamically are popping out. So, what I'm going to do again is let's do some amplitude editing. You knock me out and I these first three notes, I'm just going to notch them down a little bit. Me. About one and a half dBs. You knock me out and I can barely breathe. Like, I love this word breathe. I really want that to come up a little bit now. Breathe. Here, about two dBs. Knock me out and I can barely breathe. I like that. On to the next phrase. Hit so hard, my heart skips a beat. Skips a beat. Really want to hear that. Select the, that range. Beat. Again, only about two dBs. Hit so hard, my heart skips a beat. So I'm source audio editing this, the dynamics of this, rather than grabbing for a compressor or doing automation, which you can still do later on in the mix process. Now for the next phrase. All I need. Okay, I'm going to select those three intro um, notes. Bring them down about two and a half dBs. All I need is a little release. Really love that phrase. I'm going to boost that. Again, only about two dBs. All I need is a little release. Oh. I'm going to bring the last note again. Why? Because you know I'm a fan. But before I do that, watch as I select it. It's selecting all the way into the, the chorus. I'm going to create a separation there and tell Melodyne where to stop. And I'm going to say right about there. Okay. Now, to undo your work, I'm just using simple key commands. And to redo, again, using simple key, key, key commands. All right. So now let me select these two notes. And of course, I would be doing this in real time, usually for not talking over the audio. I'm just going to bring that up just a little bit more. And let's see what, how our, our effects are. And again, keep in mind, no crossfading. Great. Now, another thing I notice here is the vibrato. She has excellent vibrato. It's a little bit pitchy. If I wanted to equalize this, and what I mean by that, make it more, more even throughout, I can grab my pitch drift tool right here and watch as I select and drag down. See, her vibrato is more centered around the tonal center of that pitch, which by the way, is look at that, her singing, zero sense. I did not pitch edit this. That's her natural voice. Let's take a listen to what I just did here regarding the pitch drifting. Don't open my Great. All right, now let's do some pitch editing here. Let's go back to the beginning of this passage here. Here we go. From right about there to there. Let's take a listen. You knock me out and I can barely breathe. Hit so hard my All right, we're going to, again, use my macro. Why am I using my macro? Because she's really pretty much spot on. And we want to nudge these notes. Again, Watch here, I have an additional option here. Fine tune notes, include fine tune notes manually. Now I can select this and it'll actually re edit the notes that I have already edited. I don't want to do that. If I did any editing, I want to leave that out. Again, snap to C and watch, there's really only two notes that are moving. So I want to keep my eye on those. And again, for demonstration purposes, up to 100%. It's moving the most out of two notes first and then locking everything into center and hitting OK. Let's take a listen to this. You knock me out and I can barely breathe. Hit so hard my heart skips a 
bleed All I need is a little release Oh, oh. Don't open my eyes Okay, so now we're into the chorus. Here's where the, all the energy, where the song really comes together for a punch. Let's take a listen to it. Don't open my eyes. The battle is done and I think that you won. Don't open my eyes. All right, so obviously what we can see here, and again, it's an ears first, eye second program, but Melodyne does give you an excellent visual aid. I can see that obviously these parts of the chorus have more energy. There's more oomph there. Now, I'm going to highlight the, uh, the in-between parts here. Now, rather than bring down that energy because I like it, I'm actually going to raise, do some amplitude editing here, some dynamics editing of those parts. And again, just about two and a half dBs. Let's listen to the balance between that now. Battle is done, and I think that you won. Don't open my eyes. Now, if you want to re-edit something and it's not selected anymore, up here under Edit in Melodyne's menu bar, we have Select Special. I'm going to choose Restore Last Selection. And with the amplitude still selected, watch what I can do now. Done. I tweaked it down, you know, so it's not as loud as before. So keep that in mind if you want to restore a last selection. Okay, now there's not a lot here I want to do again with the amplitude because I like the dynamics. But here, let's start with these two passages. Now I can see that the artist had what I call an intended note here, but didn't quite articulate it. Let me slide my slider all the way here so we're only listening to our um, lead vocal. And I'm going to scrub this audio and listen to what I mean. So when you see a pitch line extending like this, it means that the artist didn't quite articulate what they were intending. So now I'm going to take my note separation tool and I'm going to divide that note where the pitch lines change. And sure enough, there's enough sonic energy to denote two notes, B and a C. And here, let's rubber band around these. Actually, I'll do it as a group. Watch this, because I know I noticed the same thing on this passage here, on the second part. See what I mean? Again, separate them out, and there we go. An even bigger change on that one. So now we can do some group editing on this part of the pa uh, part of the course. I'm going to rubber band around this area. Choose my macro, and look at that. Just pop everything into tonal center. Uh, and as didn't sound too pitchy, but I will notch up the drift just a hair and hit OK. Now, let's take a listen. Don't open my eyes. OK. Now, remember, we have a way of manipulating the transition lines between our audio. So if you feel that your audio is a little bit too curt sounding, it's not permanent. Remember our pitch lines here. I can select these three notes and I could edit them as a group. See that? The transition between the audio. So I can make it more fluid if you want. So again, you're not stuck with just anything. It's making Melodyne work for you. That's key here. All right. Now let's do the bottom half of these passages because I fixed these parts, the in-between parts. I'm going to rubber band around these and let's use my macro again. Snap and see what's changing. Okay, I keep an eye on those. And again, for demonstration purposes, lock it up to tonal center. And this last passage actually sounds pretty good to me. Look at that. Zero cents off. Beautiful, beautiful singing here. I'll select them. Choose my macro. Now, if you didn't want to use your macro, by the way, you can just double click with the pitch tool and everything that's selected will automatically pop into tonal center. The difference is with the macro is you can adjust the amount that you want. See? And again, it's best to do this during playback. But again, in this situation, for demonstration, pop it right into tonal center. All right, let's take a listen to this. See if there's anything more we need to do before we create some harmonies here. Don't open my eyes. 
You know, I heard something right here in the very beginning. Let's take a listen to this. Now let's do something creative, something that the artist may have intended but didn't quite come out. And Melodyne is actually a really wonderful tool to help communicate ideas too, so keep that in mind. Don't open my eyes. It's that word open right here I'm hearing. All right, let me take my separation tool and I'm going to separate it right there. Take my pitch tool and... Oh. Let's take a listen to this performance. Now, I literally changed the performance. Let's see if it works. Don't open my eyes. Okay, so let's set a loop marker around that. And I'm going to undo that. Let's see, I can undo and redo. See that? Undo and redo. Here's the original. Don't open my eyes. And here's what I just did. Don't open my eyes. So yeah, that's kind of creative. I actually like that. I'm going to keep that. All right, now we've done quite a bit here. Uh, and I know we're just covering the first half, the first minute of the song, but I want to also get into something even more creative, like, like harmonies. So let me go back to the beginning of the song. Uh, let's go back to our Pro Tools view here. Okay, so we've got Melodyne here in our lead vocal. Now, this is something you could duplicate your lead vocal track prior to Melodyne editing, or you could do it afterwards. Just be mindful that it has been previously edited. I'm going to right click and choose duplicate now. And here, yes, I want to keep that everything checked, my active playlist and such. And for now, I'll just do one copy and hit OK. Now, basically, it's, re it's made an identical copy of that. If I was to play this back now, the vocals would just sound a little bit louder because of the summing. One important thing I really want to stress is renaming this. Why? Because you don't want to accidentally uh, be editing your lead vocal again. So by giving it a name, something that's very, very easy to remember, uh, really makes a big difference. Now, when I open my Melodyne plugin, you'll see, surprise, there is my duplicate track. And I'm going to order it as the same order that I have in Pro Tools. So here's the lead vocal. Here's the harmonies, and they're both the same. What I'm going to do now is delete the parts of, from the harmonies that aren't really going to be part of what I want to harmonize. And the way I'm doing this is literally just rubber banding and hitting delete on my keyboard. Now let's take a listen to this part of the song, the second part. You knock me out and I can barely breathe. Hit so hard. Now what you harmonize is up to you. I'm just going to start picking some things creatively here. I'm going to delete this section and perhaps I want to just harmonize this part. And I can barely breathe. Hit so hard my heart. So I'm going to harmonize the second part of these passages here. My heart skips a beat. All I need is See what I'm doing? I'm deleting the first part of the phrases and leaving the the second part. And let's leave that part there. Okay. Now remember, you don't want to leave something accidentally because it will it will incur some kind of volume change with your work. Uh, let me delete this. We don't want to harmonize that or these parts. Let's work with the um, the power verses, of course, and delete that. Now. If I select, hold command, and choose the gray icon on my lead vocal, I can see the reference notes representing my, my lead vocal, okay? Because we didn't pitch, we didn't create harmonies yet. They're not in a different pitch location, all right? So let's have a little bit of fun now. Now, one thing we should do when you're creating harmonies is you do want to have some kind of, of, of difference because if they're too similar, you might even incur some kind of comb filtering effect before you, you pitch edit them, and you don't want that. So what I'm going to do here is just use Melodyne, some of, uh, some of its creative tools. Let's take a listen to this again. And I can barely breathe. All right. So some things we can begin to do here is I can edit it as a group. I can select everything, for example. And under pitch, 
we have modulation. I'm going to change the vibrato, click and drag, Belly. a little bit less vibrato, so I can increase it or decrease it. Under drift, I'm going to double click, and it kind of has this automatic drift correction function. Now we're just working with the modulation, but every little bit sums and adds up to the finished product. So another thing I want to show you is under edit, we have random deviations. I could choose pitch here and timing. Like for example, if I wanted just a slightly different pitch variations, I could do that. And under timing, we could choose something like that. Now it's going to be a little bit outstanding. And when I say outstanding, I mean that as two words. It's going to be differentiated. Another way we could do this here that's new in Melodyne 4 is under scale from the drop down, we have something called apply dynamic just tuning. Now this way of creating a difference uses a more musical sense than just a random deviation. Watch as I select it. Some of the notes moved again. Now what that means here is it's actually kind of thinking about it in an in a real world scenario, how the word, how the pitches blend into each other and where they might be if it was more naturally recorded. It doesn't use a random generator, more of an intelligent audio pitch detection generator. So keep that in mind. But of course we have to hear this. Um, well, we should create our harmonies too here. So with everyone's everything selected, let me check uh, my pitch tool. And why don't we pitch everything? Let's go up a little bit. We'll go to E Next. there. Now, our volume, by the way, here in Pro Tools, I'm going to lower the volume of our harmonies. Let's bring it down to about 4.6 dBs. Why? Because I don't want the harmonies to overpower the lead just yet. Okay? Or at all. So let me bring in my lead vocal on top of it. And here, what we're looking at now is both the lead and the harmonies. Let's take a listen, see how this is shaping up. You knock me out and I can barely breathe. Hit so hard my heart skips a beat. Now, some of you might be thinking, wow, you know, I don't know if I like that or what is it doing to it? It's every good producer and engineer realizes the danger of soloing things. It's how it fits in the mix that always counts. Because sometimes, you know, we may have a habit of, of perfecting the tone of something while it's soloed. But this track is destined to live in a mix. So your edits may not sound like you may expect at first. So be mindful of the soloed effect that happens when you're working with audio. The human brain puts it all together inside our, and it sums it inside our heads. And that's what's important. So with that in mind, let me bring in our reference track as well. Here, I'll make that, um, that one gray and these two there. Let's take a listen. You knock me out and I can barely breathe. Hit so hard my heart skips a beat. All I need is a little release. Oh. Okay, there's some more we can do now here at the tail end. Let's take a listen to this. Another trick with creating harmonies is to create a real differentiation. I'm going to take my note separation tool and I'm going to separate hmm, this note right about there. And let's change the performance. Oh. Oh. Hear the difference there? Let me undo that. This is before. Oh. And this is after. Oh. like it. So let's move on. Uh, let's carry on and let's get to the power section here. All right. Now let's take a look at these here. And I'll probably do these as a group since it is the chorus and they're, they're pretty similar. So let me select them as a group. And let's again change our modulation a little bit. That always helps. I'll make it a little less modulated and double click with my pitch tool. And let's try that dynamic just tuning and see how they shifted a little bit. Already, this is going to sound different. But this time with our pitch tool, let's bring them down. Let's pitch these down. Let's go from um, C, let's bring it down to, down to G. Sound a little bit lower. Let's hear how this sounds in the mix. And again, it really should be doing this in real time. Let's take a listen. Don't open my eyes. All right, so for simplicity, I'm also going to amplitude these down. 
within Melodyne rather than grabbing the level again. Don't open my eyes. Great. It's shaping up. Now, another thing we can do with that audio selected here, highlighted for editing, is also choose sound editor. Now, this will actually change the tone of the, of the audio. Using these tools in Melodyne, I can increase, for example, the brilliance or emphasize the unique sounding uh, qualities of that, that take. And under EQ, we can change our EQ. I can flatten it out just a little bit, make it a little bit more warmer here regarding the EQ. Let's take a listen to this now. Don't open my eyes, the battle is done. Nice. Now, there are some more things we can do here. Let's go back and have a little bit of fun since, uh, since I'm totally in the zone and enjoying this. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. Let's take a listen to this section again. Here, let's have a little fun with this word skips. Let me separate this note out and let's have a little fun with it. Let's have fun with this. I'm going to exaggerate that just for effect. Take a listen. Ooh, that actually worked really well. <laughs> That's the miracle. That's the joy of, of audio production and why we do it. All right, let's take a listen to this whole passage. Now for the very ending phrase here at the end of the chorus, I might just really take my amplitude tool because it is a little bit really dynamic. It's overpowering just a little bit compared to the rest of the, the track. And again, only about two dBs. Oh, you know what it is? Here we go. Just what I warned you of before. We have... We have doubles there, and we don't want to sum that audio. That's another reason why it was sounding louder. So keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do here with my harmony selected is I'm going to select that area and just take them out, and there is the original vocal performance behind it. Again, this is a real-world working scenario I'm offering you here and how we work. Let's take a listen now, and I will select focus on the lead vocal track, and let's bring everything in. So what we're looking at here is the stereo track, the harmonies, and the lead track. Great. Now we covered quite a bit here, but it's not everything. Melodyne can do so much more. This is kind of an insight into how I would approach this particular track. I want to thank Warren Hewitt, love working with you, the band Little Empire here, and of course, Lily and her amazing voice. As ever, thank you ever so much for watching. Please leave a whole bunch of questions and comments below. And of course we can get Carlo to chime in and give us his opinion about anything that you might have, and obviously advice on how to use Melodyne. Thank you for watching. Have a marvelous time recording and mixing. And please sign up for the 14-day free trial of the Academy. I think you'll like it. And of course, you'll get a bunch of free stuff.